Hey guys, so I wanted to do a little bit of a different video today. I wanted to talk about some of my the way I like to train and uh, specific training and how to develop your game if you're training at a smaller gym. Uh, so I want to talk about kind of my philosophy for jiu-jitsu. So I see the way a lot of people train is they kind of just go into the gym, they learn random techniques, and then they just go hard all the time. So I think it's like a really, um, you can do that and you can have success, but I think it always works better to do like specific training first. So I try to break my game down into specific mini games, okay? So like, so let's take, say for example here, right? We can just have a full match here and I can start trying to pass and maybe he goes to spider guard, he sweeps me, I end up in side control, all these things happen. But I like to break the jiu-jitsu down into separate mini games that all have their own separate like wins and losses. So for example, I could be in the closed guard, right? If I'm in the closed guard, right? Uh, my, I basically, I win if I open his guard. Okay, every now and then you can do some crazy submission from here on top, but generally I'm just trying to open the guard, right? So I do some sort of, you know, move, come back here, or whatever it is, and you open the guard, okay? I win if I open the guard. He wins if he sweeps or submits me. So in that case, we can, we could almost make an entire sport out of just uh, being in closed guard. I win if I open it, he wins if he sweeps or submits, right? It'd be boring sport, but you can make that its whole, uh, whole entire thing, right? We can do that with every position in jiu-jitsu, right? If we're in, say, uh, De La Hiba, he has my ankle, okay? We're here, right? I win if I can pass the position or, or say, just break it and transition to another position. He wins if he sweeps or submits me or transitions to another position. So maybe I'm here, right? And then I hit a knee cut pass, right? And then now I get the side control and now we're in this, now it's like, can he escape side control better or can I control side control better, right? Uh, and then I, from here, it's like either he escapes or I upgrade to the mount position. Now it's either I'm better at controlling mount or he's better at escaping. Each of these are separate mini games, right? And you can isolate these things down into positions that you can train specifically. This increases your ability to improve like much faster, especially if you're training at a small gym. Let's say like uh, my original gym, it's a really good gym, but it's different than training like if you're on the West Coast and you have 30 black belts in your class, you know, maybe you're training in a small gym in the Midwest. I came from St. Louis and, uh, you know, no one there is playing worm guard, right? So if you just go into the gym and do regular rounds all the time and no one in your gym is playing worm guard, doesn't matter. You could do 20, 10 minute rounds as hard as you can every single match. But then you go into a tournament and the guy puts you in worm guard. You've never been there. It's irrelevant. All the hard training won't matter because you're stuck. It's like trying to uh, take steroids to solve a Rubik's cube. It, just, it doesn't have any effect. Um, so... Uh, with that, not, like understanding that concept that we can break everything down into the mini game, like even even like the grip fight, right? Like I often we'll do specific training where we start from here. He wins if he establishes a guard position. Like if he establishes like we come and he gets a lasso or something, boom, right? He achieves the lasso, we stop, right? If he achieves like he gets my collar and he gets the De La Hiva, right? And we're here, we stop, right? And then I'm trying to pass or like establish a dominant position, we stop. You can isolate everything down into these separate games and make your own rules, parameters for what you want to develop. Uh, when you go into these matches too, another benefit is like it drops the ego a lot. You're willing to try stupid stuff or things that are new and not you don't care if you lose because it's, it's kind of like a set, it's specific training. It doesn't really count, right? And that's a big thing I see with a lot of guys training is the ego matters a lot, right? Like everyone says they don't have an ego, but I promise you if you're in the gym and you pass like uh, Marcelo Garcia's guard, he's not going to be super happy about it, right? He's going to try to fight back, right? So this is a way to like really take risks and try things and develop fast. Um, so with that, I want to talk about like the way I like to, to instruct because like as I go forward doing videos, I want to uh, have you guys on the same page as me as like what the purpose of the videos are. So teaching in person is very different than when you're making videos because in person I can constantly recorrect and change things. I get one shot with the video. So there, uh, the concept that I think is really important is I see a lot of people show techniques and they show like a single technique in isolation. So maybe you learn, here's a spider guard sweep, right? But if you don't play spider guard, you don't know how to hold spider guard, that move doesn't really help you, right? It's, you, you, the moves don't work in isolation. They work as a whole package, right? So uh, I, I see a lot of people like go to close guard, like, like they'll be here, right? And maybe someone will be in their head, they're like, I'm gonna master, the, like um, the person on bottom is thinking, I'm gonna master the arm bar first. And then once I can do the arm bar, then I'll learn the triangle. But like if we're here and he keeps wanting to do an arm bar and I'm doing this with my hands, the arm bar doesn't really make sense, right? He has to maybe go for a collar choke or go for a triangle or, or some, some other attack, right? So any like position that you're learning is gonna have combos. 
Uh, because if the guy knows what you're doing, he's going to defend. You, like Almost every position bit works off of combos, even the grip fight game. You have like maybe an arm drag, a collar drag, or you just get a sleeve and set up a lasso. And you make these mixes together. So the, the two main types of videos I want to do is one type of video will be where I do what I'll call like a positional analysis, where I just explain the concept of the position. Uh, and then another type of video will be where I go more into detail on the actual technique itself. So for example, I'll just use De La Hiva. It's one of my favorite positions, like top and bottom, uh, for, for going into. So like if I was doing, I'll do an actual video on this position, uh, it might be my next video. But just like as a loose guideline, how I would explain this is I might do a video just explaining the concept of what, what I'm trying to do on top here, right? So uh, basically the guy on bottom could be holding my ankle with his left hand. You can come around here. Okay, he could be holding my ankle or, or the pants with his left hand. Okay, going even deeper, he could underhook the leg or like wrap it with his arm, but we're, don't worry about that right now. We're just talking about the basic De La Hiva. So on top, I'm generally looking to pass with a couple, like four or five main types of passes. There's a leg drag pass. There's a reverse leg drag pass. There's a knee cut. There's a folding pass. And then we have maybe a stack pass. Um, and then another one I really like is smashing towards the deal with side here, right? Just understand the concept. Even if, like, I didn't show you guys how to do those techniques or anything. I will in, in further videos. But just the concept that you understand, okay, those are six of, there's a few more passes, but maybe those are like six of the main passes. It, it, gets, you, it gets your brain working and understanding that position. You see, oh, it, one of these combos is going to work. So if I'm in De La Hiva and like I feel like, man, like I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to trap the leg and he keeps pulling his foot out. Maybe the leg drag, right? Maybe he's keeping this foot high. The leg drag's hard. I go the other way. Just understanding that these moves all work together is a huge aspect of the game. Um, you know, and then even within that, like little things like how do you hold the pant leg? Like there's little details like bring your elbow in more. Don't have it out wide. How do you hold the collar? Things like that that are like this kind of jujitsu in between the techniques that are important to understand. So I'm gonna do uh, a lot of videos where it's kind of to get you guys, get your mind right about what the position is about. And then you guys can start your specific training. And then I'll do separate videos where I go more in depth on like how to actually execute this move. But the first thing you guys have to do is I always recommend like pick a position you wanna work for like a week or two, like take daily Hiva passing. And you guys go in the gym, you get your partner, and you start there, I'll be on top for eight minutes in De La Hiva guard, just trying to pass. And then as you do this, don't even worry about what passes you're doing, just try to learn, and you'll start to notice certain sweeps keep happening to you. Certain uh, you know, submissions keep happening to you. you know, you're know, you trying to do your knee cut, it's not working. You just keep spending time there, and you'll start developing this raw understanding of what the position is about. And then over time, the moves will start working as a whole. So rather than trying to like improve your overall jujitsu, Focus more on improving yourself in individual positions, and then you'll you'll start to notice in your regular roles. Whenever you get in that position, you're more knowledgeable. And ultimately, all a regular role is is just a collection of all these different mini games together in one, right? So if I go do a regular match, I can always diagnose what what went wrong because after the fact, I can I can say you know oh I pull guard, I got to my lasso spider, and then he looped out and threw me, right? Then I can go okay my lasso spider game is the, is the weakness, I need to go positional train the lasso spider game, right? Or maybe I get closed guard and he opens it. Then I can go, okay, my closed guard uh, got opened, uh, he got out, I couldn't hold it, so that's a weakness, I, need, I can positional train that. You know, in any one match, you may have seven or eight uh, like mistakes that you made, so you can, you can always, you pick what's most important to you at the time, okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, so the next thing I'm gonna do is probably gonna be more of an in-depth analysis of the daily Hiva guard. Uh, but I just I really thought this was an important video for you guys to have so as I go forward with the techniques You know where I'm coming from. All right. All right guys. Thanks a lot And uh, as always if you guys like the video, please share uh, subscribe and like thanks a lot